Hi. I must warn you, there will be two tests during this presentation. It's a school after all. The first one begins now. Who is this? Anybody? All right, I realize you guys are used to multiple choice tests. So maybe this is a hipster from Minneapolis. Or is he just a random Google photo? Or maybe this is me with hair. I used to have hair. Or maybe, just maybe, this is Vincenzo Perugia. And I realize I led you on to this answer. You probably said A, because I figure the individual in the photo is not eating kale chips or drinking a craft beer, but he could pass for a hipster. <laughs> However, you are dead wrong. This is, in fact, Vincenzo Perugia. On August 21st, 1911, Vincenzo Perugia walked into the Louvre and hid in a broom closet. When the museum emptied, he walked out, walked up to the painting, took it off the wall, took it out of its frame, threw his jacket over it to conceal it, put it underneath his arm, and he simply walked out. Vincenzo Perugia stole the Mona Lisa. But this was 1911. What would it take to steal the Mona Lisa today? I asked myself this question. In fact, I asked, what if the purpose of school was to teach students to steal the Mona Lisa? What kinds of skills would I have to teach them then? And many skills came to mind, but three in particular stood out. And it's because we don't teach them in school. The first skill required to steal the Mona Lisa is teamwork. Now you would think because you have 30 plus kids sitting in a room together, they get to collaborate a lot. But this isn't simply the case. While they occupy the same space, they work in isolation. Because in class, we do a lot of, hmm. Because in class, we do a lot of this, I apologize. We read through long slideshows while students frantically write. As they write, we talk. We give them examples, anecdotes, to drive those points home. But that's no good because they cannot read, write, listen, and comprehend all at the same time. No one can. This is why neuroscientists call this cognitive overload. But we teachers call it a lecture. <laughs> a lecture is followed by homework. This is typically a long worksheet filled with questions, and those questions are intended for students to achieve mastery through spaced practice. But here's the problem. Students are not practicing what they did. At home, they are trying to recreate what the teacher did. And if they can't, they have to teach themselves. And if they can't do that, they will get the answers from someone else. And can we blame them? But just imagine that the purpose of school was to teach students to steal the Mona Lisa. Not only would the classes be more engaging, but we would have to teach teamwork. Because no individual can steal the Mona Lisa. It will require a team that can work together, a team that can communicate efficiently, a team on which each member knows his or her role and fulfills it to complete the mission. The second skill required to steal the Mona Lisa is confidence. We do not instill confidence in our students in school. Think about it. Consider a vocabulary quiz. The learning methods that students have are pretty primitive. Usually we tell them to either write lists or maybe use flashcards, and they do that. And they do really well on that quiz. They even get an A, right? But then 
two weeks late, later, something magical happens. They forget everything. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. It's because we're not teaching our students to use their brains the way they were meant to be used. This looks like a grocery list, I assure you. It's not my grocery list. But it's a list of 10 foods that promote a healthy brain. And that's something that anyone can use. So I'd like to do a little experiment with you guys. Um, I'd like you to learn these in 60 seconds, memorize them, and then remember them forever. Do you think you could do it? You'd remember them forever. Uh, personally, I think you'd be screwed. <laughs> but, but what if I could guarantee you that you will leave this presentation and leave tonight knowing all 10? And if you choose, you can remember them forever. Would you guys indulge me and participate in this? All right, let's, let's get rid of this because we don't want to be accused of cheating, right? So, for this to work, I need you to do three things. I need you to see, I need you to link, and I need you to go. Here's what that means. Seeing is all about visualizing everything that I'm describing. Linking, we're going to use a part of your body to link it to each food. It's going to be kind of fun. I need you to touch that part of your body as we do it and visualize it as well. And third, we're going to make it all go. So we're going to add action. So no matter how crazy or ridiculous the action is, please imagine it. You guys ready? All right, here we go. So you can close your eyes or you can keep them open. This is up to you. Now, imagine head, top of, touch your head. Come on, it's kind of fun, right? Imagine you're balancing a bowl of avocados on top of your head. The bowl is red and full of avocados, and you're running from side to side trying to keep it all balanced. Next is your nose. Touch your nose. Blueberries start pouring out of your nose. You try to stop it, but more and more purple blueberries just keep coming out. Next are your ears. Touch your ears. Coconut oil starts flowing out of your ears. Thick, greasy, warm coconut oil, like two waterfalls. Next, your mouth. This has been a long day and you got hungry, so all of a sudden you start shoving broccoli in your mouth like a maniac. More and more green broccoli florets and you just shove them. Next, your shoulders. Imagine yourself wearing your favorite jersey and you look over at your shoulders and green leafy vegetables, kale, spinach, lettuce, start growing out from underneath the sleeves. Leafy vegetables growing out like shoulder pads. Next, your neck. You look in the mirror and you notice that your Adam's apple has turned into an egg. I don't know why. You touch it in disbelief and sure enough it cracks and the yellow yolk comes out and makes a mess. Next, your chest. You look and you notice you're wearing a salmon necklace on your chest. Pieces of pink meat strung together, and you can even smell that pungent salmon smell. Next, your belly button. This kind of seems like a selfie or something, right? Belly button. You notice there's a walnut inside your belly button. But the walnut's not just sitting there, no. It's doing a belly dance. So you have a belly dancing walnut inside your belly button. How crazy is that? Next, your fingers. Focus, because this one's hard. Turmeric. You're rubbing turmeric between your fingers. It's golden yellow, it smells spicy, and it feels like sand. It's turmeric and it stain stains your fingers yellow. Last but not least, this one's fun, your butt. Touch your butt, come on. All right, imagine yourself wearing your favorite jeans and in the back pocket you have a dark chocolate bar, right? <laughs> That's nice, except it starts to melt and makes a dark brown stain on your favorite jeans. <laughs> I am sorry to do this to you and to your favorite jeans, but that's memorable. So, let's see if you guys remember. Let's recall. While you recall, touch the part of your, of your head and you will think of the food. You guys ready? All right, head. Nice. Nose. Ears. Mouth. Shoulders. 
Neck, chest, belly button, fingers. This one's hard. And your buns. Isn't it amazing? Thank you for participating in this experiment. It was important to show you that to steal the Mona Lisa, our students will need to be able to think on their feet and also use their brains to their full amazing potential. The third skill required to steal the Mona Lisa is the ability to innovate. Unfortunately, schools are more about rehearsing and regurgitating old information and not innovation. We do talk about growth mindset a lot. It's become one of the most popular buzzwords in education. But we managed to screw it up in education. Let me give you an example, testing. In most schools, testing is a one and done proposition. You learned what you learned and you get what you get and there will be no retake. But isn't growth mindset all about failing forward and learning from failure? How come we do not allow students to improve their educational outcomes? You know, um, to steal the Mona Lisa, the students will have to constantly innovate. Yet, when they ask for a retake, all we do is say things such as, we patronize them and say things such as, in the real world, no one's going to baby you. There will be no do-overs, so you better get it right the first time. But then, how do we explain this? Because this is what innovation looks like in the real world. They try something, right? A product, a new approach, and they fail most of the time the first time. But they will get feedback, and from that feedback, they will learn, right? And then they can change their approach and they can try again. And on and on the cycle of innovation goes. Why can't school be that way? Why we must, we must allow students to learn to innovate by allowing them to fail over and over and over again without the consequence of a bad grade. Speaking of grades, it's time for your final exam, but I know you guys will ace it. About three to five minutes have passed since we, you know, learned the 10 foods, and I know that you still remember all 10. So would you guys indulge me one more time and, and see if you can, if, you know, remember? It's kind of fun, isn't it? Okay, touch each part of, you know, of your body, especially, you know. Okay, <laughs> so, because who doesn't like doing that, right? All right, you guys ready? All right, head, nose, ears, mouth, shoulders, neck, chest, yes, belly button, fingers. Thank you. From now on, all you have to do to remember all 10 is to replay the movie I put in your heads. I hope you choose to use more of them in your daily diets. Um, so there we have it. If the purpose of school was for students to steal the Mona Lisa, we would emphasize teamwork, instill confidence, and teach students to innovate. That's pretty good considering that stealing is a crime. But perhaps what is more criminal is the fact that we don't teach more transferable skills in school. Because the truth is, I don't want my students to steal the Mona Lisa. After all, I don't think that they could sell it. However, <laughs> however, what I do want from them is to have those skills. Because I am convinced that if my students could steal the Mona Lisa, they could do anything. Thank you. <laughs>